Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the very best dash cams currently available on the market. Now, as I'm sure you're well aware of, dash cams can be very helpful to keep you protected when you're out on the road. They're designed to continually record while you're out driving, and so in case of an incident like a crash, it can prove exactly what happened, uh, for example, the fact that you were not the one at fault. Dash cams can help capture important information such as the license plates of vehicles uh, in case of a hit and run. Plus, they're also able to record while your vehicle is parked. Again, helpful in case of a hit and run or if somebody comes by and keys your car while it's parked. Now, when it comes to dash cams, the big trend over the past year or so uh, has been the introduction of the new Sony Starvis 2 image sensors. These are the latest generation of image sensors. They offer improved sensitivity and better low light recording with less noise, as well as potentially improved dynamic range. Now, it's not a revolutionary game changer or anything, but it is the latest evolution in sensor technology. And in fact, most of the dash cams that I'm gonna be recommending here feature some version of these new Sony Starvis 2 sensors. Now, when it comes to choosing a dash cam, honestly, any dash cam is better better than no dash cam, uh, but there's a million different dash cams out there. Most of them kind of stink, they use cheapy components, they may be designed poorly or have lousy video quality. However, there's also quite a few good ones out there. Now, no dash cam is gonna be perfect for everybody. They all have their pros and cons, of course. Uh, and so in this video, we're gonna take a look at a couple different types of dash cams. I'm gonna go over my favorites in different categories uh, with different feature sets and at different price points. And something that's worth noting, you know how you regularly receive updates on your phone or even the apps on your phone constantly receive updates too to add features or fix bugs? Dash cams are gonna continue to receive updates too. Now, I test a lot of different dash cams and I've yet to find one that's completely perfect. And so regardless of what dash cam you choose, I would recommend heading on over to the manufacturer's website and downloading the latest firmware for your dash cam. And to make this process even easier, down in the video description, I'm going to have links to all the different dash cams that I recommend, uh, as well as some of the recommended accessories for each dash cam. Plus, I'm going to give you links to where you can go and grab the latest firmware uh, to update your dash cam once it arrives. The purchase links down there are affiliate links, and using those does help support my channel so I can continue doing tests and comparisons like this here for you. I'm not affiliated with or sponsored by any manufacturer, though they do all send over test units for me to test and review. I've got no restrictions on what I can say, good or bad, and so in this video, we're going to do an overview of some of the best dash cams that are out there, go over some of the key features, uh, the pros and the cons, and ultimately help you decide which dash cam is best for you here in 2024. <laughs> Now, to start things off, let's begin with the best entry-level, front-only dash cam. There are a lot of dash cams like this, but my favorite goes to the VFO A119 Mini 2. You see, the video quality of this dash cam beats out just about everything that I've seen uh, in its price range. It's a 2K dash cam that has the latest Sony Starvis 2 sensor, and as the name implies, the A119 Mini 2 uh, is more compact than the A119 V3, uh, which was my long-standing pick for the best entry-level dash cam. You've got an LCD in the back to adjust different settings or aiming the dash cam during installation. You've got Wi-Fi available too to do these same things. Uh, you can, of course, play back your video footage or download the footage straight to your phone. The included HDR feature for high dynamic range is especially helpful for capturing important details uh, such as license plates when you're out driving at night. It offers buffered parking recording, which is a feature I typically only see on higher end dash cams. And so unlike most dash cams that can only record after an impact happens, this one can also record before the impact happens too to ensure that your dash cam can help capture all the evidence of what happened. That said, for parking recording, I do find that most people just switch over to your continuous low bitrate recording instead, because that'll help ensure that the dash cam can always capture everything that you need. There's voice commands available so you can use the dash cam hands-free. Turn on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi enabled. There's accessories like a remote Bluetooth button, so instead of having to reach up to the dash cam to press the emergency recording event, uh, you can have a secondary button installed somewhere more convenient that allows you to duplicate that same functionality. Though a number of people have reported some of these features actually getting triggered unintentionally, and so for that reason, you might want to consider actually uh, turning off the voice command feature, especially if you're not actually using it. It's also worth noting that some of the early copies of the A119 Mini 2 had lens focus issues when the dash cam is getting hot sitting in the sun, and so for that reason, VFO has actually updated the lens of the dash cam to help it maintain focus even in hotter temperatures. And so ultimately, if you're looking for just a great all-around dash cam, the VFO A119 Mini 2 is my top pick for an entry-level front-facing dash cam. Now, what if you'd like to add some additional camera angles to record, say, back behind your car or even inside the cabin? Well, to do that, you can take a look at some of the two-channel or even three-channel dash cams. Now, to start off, we're gonna take a look first here at the VFO A229 Plus. 
This is actually very similar to the A119 Mini 2 that we just looked at. Uh, it's got the same 2K Sony Starvis image sensor up front, but the dash cam's a little bit larger because it's gonna allow you to connect some additional cameras. You can get it with an interior facing dash cam that uses a 1080p Sony Starvis sensor. Uh, it's got some infrared LEDs that help to light up the inside of the cabin, which is especially helpful to record passengers uh, in your car at night. And it's also available with the rear camera that uses the same exact 2K Sony Starvis 2 sensor that's used in the front camera. A, a lot of dash cams use just a 1080p dash cam in the rear. This one's actually using a nicer 2K sensor, which is gonna help capture some additional detail uh, back behind you. And you can run the A229 Plus as a single channel, uh, a dual channel setup front and rear, or even the full three channel setup. And I like this dash cam because it's got all of the key features that most people would want, uh, plus the latest in image technology. It's received some firmware updates since launch that's helped to improve the dash cam, such as improving the HDR functionality, for example. And so with this dash cam, just like with all the others, I'd recommend heading on over to VFO's website and downloading the latest firmware that's available. And then when it comes to my favorite high-end dash cam, that actually goes to the VFO A229 Pro. And in fact, this is the main dash cam that I'm running in both my car and my wife's car. Uh, it's the same idea as the A229 Plus. However, the front camera gets bumped from a 2K sensor to a 4K sensor. And with this added resolution, it improves the video quality and is especially helpful for capturing important details uh, such as faces and license plates. And in fact, this A229 Pro offers some really nice improvements over my previous favorite higher end dash cam, the VFO A139 Pro. That was the first dash cam release that had a Sony Starvis 2 sensor. But now that the A229 Pro is available, I actually prefer this one for a couple key reasons. You see, I find it offers better nighttime video quality, especially when it gets super dark, uh, which was a situation that really seemed to stress the A139 Pro's front sensor. The rear camera jumps up in resolution from 1080p to 2K, and they're switching from Starvis to Starvis 2. And then they've also improved the interior camera as well. Though there sometimes will be this kind of annoying click out of the interior camera. It actually comes from the uh, infrared filter in front of the sensor. Uh, this designed to kind of switch between daytime and nighttime mode. And you'll actually hear that when the dash cam is switching modes. It's also present when you're going in and out of like tunnels, uh, for example. However, that filter is helpful for giving you more accurate colors when you're driving around in the daytime. The A229 Pro also gives you better video quality, particularly when you've got it set up as a full three channel dash cam, because now the front dash cam can finally give you a full 4K 30 FPS recording uh, with no compromises to the video's resolution, aspect ratio, or frame rate. And then there's also been some other nice improvements like an LCD in the back of the dash cam, uh, plus some added voice commands. Now the A229 Pro has had some of the same issues that the Plus had at launch, and so again, grab the latest firmware off of their website. And then finally, as far as the last couple quick tips here, when it comes to overheating, this is gonna be a struggle for basically any dash cam out there to record continuously 24 seven, including sitting in a parked car in the hot sun or something. With the A229 Pro, we have seen some overheating issues for people down in the Southern hemisphere, it's summertime down there. So like in Australia and Saudi Arabia, for example, though again, I've seen that with other dash cams as well. A couple workarounds to help minimize this. When it comes to parking record, instead of using the auto event detection feature, which is like your motion and impact detection, you can switch the dash cam over to the time-lapse recording or to the low bitrate recording. Less power draw helps to keep the dash cam cooler. Additionally, both the A229 Plus and Pro have the same like high temperature cutoff thresholds. However, Panzer platform over on the dash cam talk forums has found that the A229 Plus actually runs cooler than the Pro does, which kind of makes sense because it's only recording at 2K instead of at 4K. And so it's gonna be less demanding, putting less stress on the dash cam's processor. And so for that reason, if you live in hotter climates, you might wanna consider the A229 Plus instead of the Pro. And then finally, using a dash cam like the A229 Pro, particularly if you're running it with the full three channel setup and you're cranking it up to the maximum bit rate to give you the highest video quality, that can be really demanding on the dash cam's memory card. Uh, VFO does have some recommended memory cards listed on their website. You can use the VFO branded memory card, or you can use the more affordable SanDisk Max Endurance cards. And so down in the video description, underneath the links to where you can purchase the dash cams itself, I'm gonna be linking to the uh, recommended memory cards for you as well. Next, speaking of dash cams that have an interior cabin facing camera, uh, when it comes to the best rideshare dash cams for your Uber and Lyft and taxi drivers, in this category, we've got the Vantru N4 Pro. In fact, most of the time when I hop into an Uber or a Lyft, uh, if the driver's got a dash cam, chances are they're actually running a Vantru dash cam. You see, unlike dash cams like the A229 Plus and Pro uh, that have a separate interior facing camera, the N4 Pro actually integrates the cabin camera right onto the same body as the front facing dash cam. 
Now for myself, I prefer having the two split because it gives me more optimal placement for both dash cams. Uh, with the front camera, I can hide it uh, actually behind my rear view mirror so it blocks less of my visibility. And then the cabin camera, I like to mount up high above the rear view mirror to give it the best view uh, inside the cabin. That said, when it comes to rideshare drivers, a lot of times they wanna have things to be more prominent so people inside their car know they're being recorded. And for something like that, I think the N4 Pro is actually a better choice. This dash cam you'll typically install in the windshield kind of below the rear view mirror. This way the dash cam can record both ahead and inside the cabin. Sometimes the rearview mirror can block a little bit of the visibility, so you'll need to play with the uh, exact placement here. But when installed in this location, the dash cam itself is gonna be much more obvious and visible to anybody inside the car, especially with the big LCD on the back of the dash cam, uh, so people can see that they're being recorded. As a bonus, it can also make the installation a little bit simpler because you've just got one dash cam sitting up front on the windshield instead of having like two uh, components up there that are wired together. Now, this N4 Pro is a big upgrade over previous models like the N2 and the original N4. They've improved the parking recording capabilities and added buffered motion detection, plus they've added Wi-Fi connectivity for your phone. But one of the biggest changes is the fact that it now has a 4K Sony Starvis 2 sensor up front. The interior and rear dash cams, on the other hand, uh, both record at 1080p. And then like the VFOs, the Vantru is capable of recording in HDR for all three of its different channels. However, HDR is mostly a help at night. Uh, in the daytime, it can actually lead to more motion blur. So I wish that the Vantru offered an automatic HDR feature that could turn the feature on and off based on time of day. That feature is available on the VFOs, but it's not available on the Vantrus. And overall, I prefer the video quality and the design of the VFOs over the Vantru. But for rideshare drivers specifically, I do think that the Vantru option is gonna be a better solution. Now, according to Vantru, their most popular rideshare dash cam is actually the original N4. It's a little bit smaller than the newer N4 Pro. The front camera is a 2K Sony Starva sensor. Uh, there is some misleading advertising over on Vantru's website where they claim that it can record in 4K, which is not true. And so if you do want the higher video quality that 4K offers, you are gonna wanna get the N4 Pro. With the rear and interior facing dash cams, both of the models here record at 1080p. HDR is not available on the original N4. It only uses WDR, so the nighttime recording is not gonna be as good. And then the parking recording is also more simplistic on the original N4. There's no buffered motion detection available or anything. And so the dash cam is gonna be a little bit simpler, kind of the lower spec version, but it's also gonna be the more affordable option. And so for rideshare drivers specifically, I can totally see them going for the N4, it's still gonna meet their needs and help them save money in the process. But when it comes to the best option, I'm still gonna say that's gonna go to the N4 Pro. Next, what if you really value not only driving recording, but also parking recording, and in particular, longer term parking recording? You see, most dash cams nowadays offer some form of parking recording. As far as how long it's gonna last in parking recording mode, that's gonna vary depending on how big the battery is that's in your car, uh, how old it is, how charged it is, et cetera, or if you get a dedicated dash cam battery pack, you know, how big it is, do you have expansion batteries, how long have you driven to actually recharge the battery packs. There's also factors like how many dash cams are you running in your car, how many channels, but to simplify things, it's common to get maybe a day of parking record time uh, or maybe less. For some people that might be enough to record when your car is say at the grocery store or at work or maybe even uh, parked overnight. Uh, but what if you want longer term parking recording to maybe record all weekend or even like if you've got your car parked at the airport while you're on a trip for a week or longer? Well, if the longer term parking recording is really important, in that case, I'd say actually go take a look at some of the Thinkware dash cams. And my favorite option of theirs is the Thinkware U3000. This is Thinkware's flagship Sony Starvis 2 dash cam, uh, and it records at 4K up front and 2K in the rear. And again, this is gonna be my pick for the best long-term parking recording dash cam uh, for two reasons. Number one, uh, a lot of these Thinkware dash cams have a special energy saving mode where the idea is they kind of go into like this low powered sleep state. And in case of say an impact to your car, uh, the G sensor will get triggered. It'll wake up the dash cam and begin recording. Really nice for giving you super long-term parking recording, but the downside is it's non-buffered, right? The dash cam is asleep and it's only gonna wake up when it senses the impact, then it wakes up and begins recording. So you actually miss what happens uh, before the impact. Now, what if you want low powered parking recording and buffered parking recording to record before the impact. For that, that's where the Thinkware U3000 comes into play because it's also gonna be adding some radar transmitters that can transmit both front and rear to monitor for things like motion. Uh, very low powered radar, but if it senses, say, a car getting closer to your uh, vehicle, it's actually gonna wake up the dash cam and start recording. Then in case of an impact, it's gonna go ahead and save that entire video clip and uh, save it to the memory card. On the other hand, if nothing happens and there's no impact, the dash cam just goes back to sleep. And again, the benefit of this is the fact that you've got the long-term low power parking recording and the buffered parking recording. 
And in my car, I've got a bunch of dash cam battery packs. They're my preferred solution for parking recording with traditional dash cams. And again, I get about a day of parking record time, maybe two days if I've got an expansion battery plugged in. Uh, with the Thinkware U3000, I've just got it wired directly into my car battery and I get well over a week uh, of parking record time. And so for that reason, I love having the U3000 in my car uh, if I'm out parked for an extended period of time. Now, a couple things to note, when it comes to aiming that radar sensor, it's easier to do with the front camera. Uh, the radar transmitter is actually right next to the front lens. And so when you're aiming the lens itself to get the uh, dash cam pointed straight, the radar sensor moves right along with it. With the rear dash cam, unfortunately, that's not the case. The rear radar transmitter is fixed and doesn't move with the lens. And so for that reason, uh, this feature is really gonna work best if your rear window is angled. If the rear window is vertical, unfortunately the rear radar tracking is not gonna work well. Additionally, if you've got it with the rear dash cam, uh, make sure the cable is plugged all the way into the rear camera. You see, you can plug it in and have the uh, video portion work, but not the radar portion, unless that cable is actually plugged all the way in. And so a lot of people were wondering like, what the heck, I got the dash cam and my rear radar is not working at all. This one actually took a lot of troubleshooting to figure out, and a big thank you to Retro Car Guy 530 uh, for finally figuring out this one. And then as far as some of the other aspects of the dash cam, uh, again, as I mentioned, it's got a Sony Starvis 2 sensor up front. Uh, it lacks HDR altogether, and so it's not gonna be doing as good of a job at capturing details, particularly at night, uh, compared to something like a Vantru or a VFO or even a Blackview dash cam. I find that with the U3000, it's harder to see details such as license plates, or even just generally record what's going on around you, like the chicken running across the road here uh, in this video clip. And then as far as cloud functionality, the U3000 does offer some basic cloud features. It's gonna allow you to do things like uh, track the vehicle in real time using the app, or even live stream video directly to your phone. But doing this is gonna require some sort of external Wi-Fi hotspot because there's no LTE built into the dash cam itself. The U3000 also offers some cloud features available while you're parked. So in case of like an impact or something, you can get a notification again on your phone and let you know that something happened. Uh, that video can also be uploaded to the cloud. That said, if you're getting the U3000, I think one of the main reasons that you would get it is for the uh, energy saving parking recording, for that radar functionality. Uh, and if you're using any of the energy saving parking recording modes, it's actually gonna be turning off the cloud capabilities to save power. And so so for that reason, you're not gonna be able to use the cloud features while parked. It's kind of reverting back to uh, just cloud functionality while you're driving. However, if you have a Wi-Fi hotspot in your car that stays on while the car is parked, or let's say you're parked near your home or your work, uh, and you've got the dash cam set to your traditional, you know, buffered parking recording capabilities, in that case, you're not gonna have the long-term parking recording, falls back to just your traditional stuff, recording maybe like a day or so. But in that instance, you can get the cloud capabilities to also work while you're parked. That said, if you want a dash cam with like really good video quality or better cloud capabilities, I do think that there's better options. And really the big appeal here of the uh, Thinkware dash cams in general or the U3000 specifically is to give you the longer term parking recording protection. Now, if the cloud capabilities are a priority for you, this is the part where we're gonna be taking a look at the Blackview dash cams and specifically the new DR970X Plus series lineup. And these latest dash cams from Blackview also offer the newest 4K Sony Starvis 2 sensors up front, and then their rear dash cams record in 1080p with the Sony Starvis sensor back there. Now, before we start diving into these dash cams, they have had a couple issues at launch that have made me question whether or not I even wanna recommend these dash cams in the first place. That said, as long as you get a good copy of the dash cam and you know what some of these issues are so that you can work around them if need be, uh, you do get some really nice features here with the setup, particularly some of the cloud features. There's quite a few dash cams nowadays that offer some cloud functionality, but Blackview's been doing this for a long time and they still offer uh, the best cloud support. And with Blackview's cloud, it's gonna give you the ability to do things like live streaming what's going on with your car while it's driving or while it's parked. You can think of it as like a remotely accessible security camera. You can see your vehicle on a map or even one of my favorite features is the fact that while your dash cam is parked in case something happens, again, like a hit and run, uh, you'll get a notification right on your phone to let you know that something happened. You've got an image preview and the notification uh, and then the video file can get backed up to the cloud and you're able to remotely view that video file. Or again, you can go ahead and live stream directly into the dash cam. You can also remotely access any of the other video files that are stored in the dash cam's memory card, uh, or you can even remotely update the firmware for the dash cam too, without having to like sit in the car and you know download any files off the computer or anything, you can just do it right from the app, which again, is very convenient. On top of that, the dash cams also have a built-in LTE feature, and so the cloud stuff is all built directly in. You don't have to worry about being connected to any sort of external Wi-Fi hotspots. Some of Blackview's models have an LTE antenna built right into the dash cam, so you just pop a SIM card right into the dash cam while some other models have an external LTE antenna instead that then plugs into the dash cam itself. And then I also really like the buffered parking recording capabilities and the voice notifications that let you know something happened uh, next time you get back in your car. 
Now, with all that said, why did I mention earlier that I don't feel fully comfortable recommending these dash cams? Well, it comes down to video quality and reliability issues. You see these DR970X Pluses with the newer lenses that Blackview has added uh, actually typically have lens focus issues to where maybe like one side of the image will be sharp, but the other side of the frame will be kind of softer and out of focus. And this could be true for both the front and the rear cameras. I've noticed variances with different copies of the 970X Pluses, and even when people get replacements in, a lot of the replacements have issues too. In my car, I've got two DR970X Pluses, and the one that I'm running up front has some reliability issues. I find that it sometimes power cycles while I'm driving, so it's not actually gonna be recording the whole time. Uh, and I've also been getting a lot of corrupted videos as well, to where I get this like pink uh, lines across the frame and really jerky, basically unusable footage. And this corrupted video has happened independent of firmware version. It's happened across multiple different memory cards, including several different Blackview branded cards. But luckily it's only happened on one of my 970X Pluses, not on any of the others. And I haven't seen it to be reported pretty widespread uh, on the forums or anything. But either way, it seems like something is defective here. And so I'm gonna be uh, having the unit replaced. And so with these Blackview dash cams, I'm seeing some issues when it comes to both video quality and reliability. Cloud features are great, but like, you gotta nail the basics. And just to follow up on this, good news, uh, since shooting this video, Blackview has sent over a replacement, DR970X+. And fortunately, this copy of the dash cam does seem to record properly, both driving and parked. And for that reason, it makes me feel more comfortable both running it myself and recommending it to others. That said, even with the latest firmware, there is this exposure flicker issue. And you'll notice it when the video seems to flash a little bit. It doesn't take away from your ability to see what's going on, but it is kind of weird. And then as far as a couple other things, uh, like Thinkware, they don't offer any sort of HDR functionality, but with the Blackviews, I do see improved dynamic range compared uh, to the Thinkware dash cams. Additionally, Blackviews released a firmware update that does help to improve the video quality compared to what we've seen at launch. The video is now less grainy. It does look better than before. However, Blackviews also removed some features that were available on some of the earlier models that were actually really useful and so were some of the key reasons why I actually like to run the Blackview dash cams. For example, you used to be able to have the dash cam connect to up to three different Wi-Fi hotspots, so maybe like one in your car, uh, one at your house, and one at work, for example. That way you're not always dependent on like an LTE connection and blowing through your data caps. Now you can only connect to one Wi-Fi hotspot, that's it. Uh, additionally, some of the voice notification stuff, so letting you know that like an impact was detected in parking mode. Uh, with some of the previous models, like all the way up to the DR900X Plus, you actually had granular control over like what you get notified about and what you don't. And I had it set up to just let me know if like an impact was detected, but otherwise just stay quiet. This was something that I liked much better than something like I think where U3000 that can be pretty chatty at startup, or you just have to turn off the voice notifications altogether. But unfortunately with the DR970X and this new 970X Plus, uh, they've changed this as well to now it's just like an on off switch for the voice notifications and so you can no longer have this selective control over what it tells you and what it stays quiet about. I've run Blackviews for the past 12 years and while I've been liking most of the improvements that they made over the years, some of the recent changes have honestly been kind of frustrating uh, and annoying. That said, if you prioritize the cloud functionality, your Blackview dash cams are still gonna be the best when it comes to features and the implementation of those features. And so for that reason, if you'd like to get a Blackview, what I would recommend is that you uh, get one and make sure the firmware is updated and then take a closer look at the video quality. Make sure the lens is sharp across the frame, you know, like the left side, the center, the right, etc., and the back dash cam as well. Make sure they're both sharp. If not, you can consider trying to get a replacement or something. I'm hopeful that Blackview actually gets this address. We've seen lens alignment issues over the years. I was hoping that with the new lenses here, this would actually be sorted out, but it's not the case yet. So again, just kind of like stuff to pay attention to if you order one of these dash cams. Additionally, if you're looking at them, there's a couple different variants, you know, like front only, front and rear, or even like front and interior facing dash cam. But primarily there's three different form factors. You've got the DR970X Plus, which is the standard model. Uh, these are the ones that I run in my car. There's no LTE built into the dash cams, and so they're gonna be reliant on either an external Wi-Fi hotspot or you can use an accessory, the CM100G LTE, that plugs in to the side of the dash cam and adds in that LTE functionality. Next, there's the DR970X LTE Plus. This is more integrated. Uh, the LTE antenna is actually built into the front dash cam and the SIM card goes into there too. The trade-off though is that having everything built into the front dash cam does make that camera uh, larger and more bulky than the standard version. And then finally, there's the DR970X Box Plus. This one has a separate box with the main brains of the dash cam, uh, the processor, the memory card, etc. And this main box is gonna get tucked out of sight somewhere, which makes the whole setup more secure, uh, more hidden and stealthy, and it also helps to minimize some overheating issues with uh, less of the dash cam actually up uh, on the windshield. Additionally, the front dash cam is now gonna be even smaller than even the standard DR970X Plus, though the security case around both the front and rear dash cams does add some additional bulk, and with the rear dash cam, it actually winds up being a little bit bigger uh, than the standard rear dash cams. 
And so if you're looking for a cloud capable 4K dash cam, the Blackview dash cams are gonna be the way to go. There are some lens alignment issues that Blackview still needs to sort out. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't make the dash cam useless or anything, but it is something that needs to get addressed. Uh, there are some reliability issues that we've been seeing, though it doesn't seem to be a very widespread thing. It might just be a defective copy that I've got here on my hand. Uh, and so while I don't feel very comfortable like recommending it fully, I could still see it being a viable option as long as you know what you're getting into. Uh, and if the uh, cloud functionalities are your priority. And then finally, what about a dash cam that's built into a radar detector? Well, for most people, I think your best bet is just to keep them separate. Uh, with the standalone radar detector and dash cam, you're still gonna get the best features and video quality from like independent units compared to the ones that have everything built in. That said, if you'd like an integrated radar detector and dash cam, most of them kind of stink. They typically have a decent dash cam, but a pretty bad radar detector. Uh, but if you'd like something integrated, I think the best option uh, is gonna be the Escort MaxCam 360C. The radar detector has nice long range performance. Uh, it's got good false alert filtering. It's got GPS and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And then on top of that, it's also got a 2K dash cam built in. It's a fairly simplistic dash cam, but I like the fact that it can actually stamp some of the radar detector information right onto the dash cam video footage for you. And this MaxCam 360C, it's really the only combo unit that I've seen that actually has a good radar detector built in. That said, I do think that the radar detector still needs some improvements. Uh, in fact, it shares the same platform as the uh, other Escort Blackfin DSP detectors, like your Redline 360C, for example, uh, your Max 360C Mark II, etc. cetera. Uh, though the updates that Escort's been releasing for the other Blackfin detectors, for whatever reason, are not also coming out for the MaxCam as well. And so that one's actually still falling a little bit behind. With the uh, Escort Black Fin detectors, they still need to do some improvements in terms of like responsiveness, you know, compared to like your Unidens and Valentines, for example. And so even if they bring the updates over to the MaxCam, it's still not gonna be really where I want it. But nevertheless, there have been some improvements for the other Black Fin detectors that for whatever reason, Escort seems to be kind of like leaving the MaxCam behind. That doesn't mean that the MaxCam is a bad radar detector. Again, it's the only combo unit that has a good radar detector, but nevertheless, there are still improvements uh, that I think that it needs. Additionally, in my testing, I've also noticed some uh, power issues with the dash cam, I think due to the higher power draw of having both the radar detector and dash cam working together. Luckily, these issues don't seem to be too widespread, but I have noticed that with two different copies of the Max Cam, I could be driving around and the detector may actually shut off uh, and power off on me while I'm driving. This has happened with different firmware versions on both Max Cams. It's happened with different power cables, and I've even seen this issue Issue, uh, in different vehicles as well. Again, for most people, that's not an issue. It works just fine. And so for that reason, I like to keep the Max Cam as like my rental car dash cam and radar detector combo because it's just one device. I can just throw it on the windshield, one mount, one power cable, and it's much more convenient and easier setup to run uh, for like temporary installs or even just for like a permanent install. Again, it's gonna be uh, easier to get up and running compared to like uh, a standalone radar detector and dash cam setup. And then finally, what if you really like the idea of having an integrated radar detector and dash cam combo for the convenience of the install, the wiring, etc but you maybe want a different radar detector instead of the max cams radar detector. Well, in that case, uh, Escort actually sells a standalone add-on dash cam called the M2. The M2 is a 1080p dash cam that's designed to connect to the sticky cut mount of modern Escort radar detectors. The radar detector's power cable plugs into the dash cam, and then the dash cam has a power pass-through cable that plugs into the radar detector. And so with everything put together, you wind up having one mount and one power cable for both the radar detector and the dash cam. Uh, as a bonus, you can also connect it to a unit in radar detector with its big single suction cup mount. Plus, if you've got the detector hanging under the rear view mirror with the blend mount, uh, well, blend mount actually has an accessory that allows you to connect the M2 onto your Escort or unit in radar detector as well. Now, as for the M2 itself, it's a pretty simple and basic dash cam. And like the Max Cam, it's really only designed for front recording. The M2 does have some parking recording capabilities, but they're again, pretty simplistic. And so when it comes to features, something like a VFO A119 Mini 2 uh, is gonna give you much better video quality, way more features, and cost you less money. But the M2 is gonna be nice if you really prioritize the convenience and the integration. And so finally, now that we've run through all these different dash cams, if you're looking for something for your car uh, to keep you protected while you're driving or while you're parked, let's go ahead and wrap things up with a quick summary of all the different options here. For your best entry level front only dash cam, that's gonna be the VFO A119 Mini 2. If you'd also like to record back behind you or even inside the cabin, uh, you can get a two channel or three channel version of the VFO A229 Plus. And then if you're looking for a higher end dash cam, the best all around option is gonna be the VFO A229 Pro. And then for rideshare drivers, there's the Vantru N4 Pro. And then for parking recording, especially for longer periods of time, uh, there's the Thinkware U3000. 
And then if you prioritize cloud capability, there's the different Blackview DR970X Plus series dash cams. And then finally, if you're looking for a radar detector and dash cam combo, uh, the best integrated unit is gonna be the Escort MaxCam 360C. And the best add-on dash cam that connects right to your radar detector is the Escort M2. And if you'd like to pick up any of these dash cams down in the video description, I'm gonna have links to all of the dash cams that I talked about here, along with your recommended accessories and where you can grab the latest firmware uh, to make sure that you've got you know, the latest features and bug fixes available for any of these dash cams that you choose. Whew. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comment area below. You can also join us over on the dash cam talk forums. That's a great place for not only discussing dash cams, but also getting tech support and help in case anything goes wrong. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can find out as new videos like this are made available. Once again, thanks so much. Hope you guys are doing great and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.